Well, I've been sitting here for the past, I don't know, 15 minutes trying to get this thing cleaned off. Getting all these knots and stuff cut off so I don't cut my hands up. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to find one with a, a point. I mean, uh, with a Y on it. You know what? I think I'm going to try attaching my knife to the end of this guy. I think I'm going to try. Just so I can get some extra weight on him. We'll see. I'm going to turn the camera off. I think I'm running out of battery. Well, I got my spear ready. This uh, knot on here is called the uh, Bush Boy Knot. Uh, I'm not quite sure exactly what it is. I just, uh, I had about 100 feet of rope in my uh, pack. And so I just started wrapping it and wrapping it and wrapping it. It's tight on there. Uh, the thing I wanted to tell you is that if you could, if you had a knife or something like that for your protection, having it on a spear is really nice. Like I said before, uh, in Oregon, I think actually most of the entire United States, uh, except for Alaska, you can't spearfish uh, without a certain kind of license, and I don't have that license. So I'm not going to be able to spearfish any of these uh, fish in here. Legally, I can't. So I'm just going to go and uh, maybe set up a little target or something and then uh, show you how to fish. These rivers are actually, I'm pretty sure, would be pretty easy to spearfish because I've been on these rivers and they just, uh, you'll see big old fish this big, I mean, gigantic fish, and they're just sitting there. And there are schools of them, you know, and there are 15, 20 of them, and they're not even moving, and you can just walk right up next to the, you know, bank and just, if you're a really good shot. There's a target, my sock. Fill it up with some dirt. If I did, my, some, Lucky chance did hit it. It's uh, not very edible. Oh, yeah. I'm a little close to him right now. I'm about as far away from him as I would be on the shore, right up there. See if I can do this. The trick to spearfishing in the water, a lot of people would think it'd be just as easy as spearfishing on fish, stabbing something on ground. Well, the thing is, is the water is tricky. It, the reflection of the water, uh, what you see, if you saw a fish there where that sock would be, it's actually not there because the water reflection is changing where it is. So if I aimed right at that sock, I would miss it because it's not there. So you got to be a little bit tricky. It's, you got to be, you know, you got to play around with it and practice in the water a little bit and see exactly where my spear is going to hit if I aim here. What I would do is aim a little bit closer to me from it. So if it was there, I'd aim a little bit closer, maybe two or three inches closer to me, and then I would hit it. Okay? So I'm actually not even aiming at it. I'm aiming three or four inches towards me. And that sounds really weird, but it actually, it should work. I've never done this before, but it should work. We're going to find out. I'm such a bad shot, I'd probably miss it, but let's see here. Okay, be very quiet. Don't want to scare this sock away, okay? This is a very expensive sock. If I miss them, I may never be able to catch them again, so, you know, so just, just watch out for that sock. Well, my spear worked pretty good, but... Oh, wow, I caught a minnow! Not that lucky. Okay, I missed. First try. Try two. Strike two. Did I get it? Oh, no. Missed. Okay. Here's the feel. I think what I have to do is aim. Yeah, I, I, I'm not really doing this right. I need to aim a little bit more towards me to uh, get rid of this reflection. Like I said, practice with it. Before you go out and fishing, I mean, I know you probably won't have a lot of time. You want to get that fish right away, but practice with it. Try this again. Alrighty. Ready. 
Hope that tape ain't running out. Ah, ah, ah. Let's try it again. Ha! Yeah! Right on! Oh, wow! Oh, look at that! That's what I'm talking about! A fish! Ha ha! Right on! Oh wow, I'm coming. Going places, baby. I'm going places. Oh yeah. Hope the camera got that. Oh, wow. Okay, we're having having sock tonight. Look I found. A mussel shell. It's gone though. Here's another one. Maybe these are just dead ones. That's another one. I found something over here when I was talking to you. Yeah, it's a dog rose. I'll, I'll, it's a whole bush there. I didn't even see it. And that's the thing is, it's really hard if you're not if you don't know what you're looking for. It you just miss it. You just walk right by it. Oh, didn't even. Didn't even catch it, but it's everywhere around here. Dog rose, dog rose, dog rose. And it's a really cool plant, and I'll show you why. Uh, I'm gonna bring the camera over here and I'll show you. And here it is. It's got these little red berries. I don't know if you can see it, because, uh, here, I'll pull them off. Little red berry, like this. And these little red berries, edible. Um, and you can eat them. They're full of vitamin C. Um, and as you can see, it's right around here. These are all the little berries on it and stuff like that. These are the leaves that you're going to find. And it's just growing in the side of this hill here. And there's some right there and uh, some over here. But actually, a couple of years ago, this uh, dog rose, I uh, found it up in a cave up in the mountains, way away from anywhere where there's water. And only time it gets water is during the wintertime and, uh, you know, occasional rains. But uh, it was up there in the rocks, just down in a gully in the mountains up there in some caves. And it was growing and had all kinds of berries on it, or hip, rose hips. And it's full of vitamin C, really good for you. Uh, and it, it's kind of nasty tasting, but uh, you'll get used to it. Here's another really cool plant, uh, cattail. Uh, the whole root is edible. Actually, the whole plant is edible, but right now, in late August, it's become kind of woody on me. Early July, this white part down here, it's uh, like a cucumber. You just take it off, cut it, throw it into a pot for about a minute, boil it, to kill all the bugs and pathogens that are in this water that cling to it, and then just eat it. it tastes like cucumber. It's really sweet, really nice. So there's cattail. It grows all over in swamps and, and lakes and stuff like that. It's a good plant to get to know because it can uh, it could save your life in early July and stuff. Just because that the whole thing is edible, it's got so many uses in the early summer. So. It's always hard for me to think of a good beginning and a good ending for these shows. So this time for the ending, I'm just gonna say, see you later. Love Gage!